Europe, just like any other region of the world, possesses its own indigenous ethnoculture that is a rich tapestry of unique diversity. Thousands of years have formed unique pockets of distinct culture, with regional cuisines, native costumes, and very special dialects. The diaspora of ethnic Europeans to far-flung corners of the world has resulted in ethnic Europeans of the New World who often don't understand the special array of diversity that abounds in the homelands of their own ancestors. Therefore, white people in America, Australia, and Canada are often shockingly ignorant about how their ancestral lands are suffering due to the globalist assault on the European societal way of life. Unfortunately today, we face a situation where the liberal establishment has been manipulating Westerners to believe that we are somehow lacking in diversity and must therefore import it from all over the world, anywhere but from nations populated by ethnic Europeans. This demographic influx is causing a great deal of strain on Western societies in many different ways, but one tangible example of this genocide of ethnic Europeans is the dwindling of native European languages and dialects, many of which are already on the verge of extinction. The Atlas of World Languages in Danger lists 13 endangered German dialects and a whopping 26 in France. What many New World Europeans fail to understand is that European languages are not monolithic. In fact, in many cases, language standardization is a very recent occurrence, such as for German and Italian, for example. While all Germans today learn Hochdeutsch, the standardized German that we English speakers learn if we study German in school, there is an abundance of variation in language found not only in Germany, but in other German-speaking countries, as well as areas that historically had German populations. Dialects can vary so greatly that a Northern German may be unable to understand a Southern German if they are using their own regional dialects, such as Plattdeutsch and Bayerisch. When we look to Italy, we see a huge spread of native language diversity. Whereas the variations in Germany are considered dialects, in Italy we see not only dialectical variation of Italian language, but we also see variations in speech that are classified as distinct and separate languages, not merely dialects, such as the Lombard language. Lombard is a fascinating language because it is a Gallo-Italic language, meaning it has heavy influence from Celtic and Germanic language, as well as Latin, making it very different than the Italian spoken elsewhere in Italy. These languages demonstrate the history of Europeans and the unique layering of culture in the European landscape that occurred over the millennia. A video by the Lang Focus channel called Languages of Italy explains that these languages had already been under pressure due to urbanization and population movement. Previous eras in Western history have had catastrophic effects on regional cultural diversity. In addition to language and dialect, the folk beliefs and traditions were also being eroded by the 19th and 20th centuries. The Romantic era was a reaction to and a rejection of industrialization and urbanization which was wreaking havoc on European culture. The nationalist movement of the 20th century was born as a drive to protect the cultural heritage of Europeans. However, in a bid to unify people into strong nation-states, nationalistic governments embarked on language standardization campaigns. There were many benefits to standardizing language, not the least of which was allowing citizens in different parts of the nation to understand each other. However, this drastically impacted the viability of regional dialects and native minority languages. 
While the dialects of German may vary and differ to the degree that speakers might sometimes have difficulty understanding one another, they are still considered dialects or variants of the German language. We have seen that the Lombard language is classified as a distinct and separate language, therefore it is not a dialect of standard Italian. But Lombard is related to Italian and is still predominantly a Latin-based language. But when we look over to Spain and France, we find the Basques, who are unique outliers in both language and culture. While the German and Italian languages fall on different branches of the language tree, they are both umbrellaed under the Indo-European language family. Therefore, though they may seem very different, they are still related to one another, as are most of the languages and dialects in Europe. However, the Basques stand out because they do not relate to any other known language, not only in Europe, but in the entire world. The vast majority of European languages are in the Indo-European language family. The languages of the Finns, Sami, and Hungarian stand apart because they are not Indo-European, but rather in the Uralic family. The Basque language, however, does not belong to any other known language family. Unfortunately, the nationalism of Spain in the 20th century, while it had good intentions, did devastate the Basque culture and language. However, the Basques are holding on much better in Spain than they are, quite sadly, in France. Another video by Langfocus called Basque, a language of mystery, mentions that the French government does not recognize any native language other than standardized French. This is shocking and should be deeply offensive to ethnic Europeans worldwide when one considers that among the regional dialect variations on the French language, there are also distinct languages like Celtic Breton and German Alsatian spoken within the borders of France, both of which have been dwindling for generations. Meanwhile, France has been importing non-European immigrants and harboring illegal invading migrants at vastly greater numbers than any other nation not only in Europe but very likely the world when one considers that no other region on the planet welcomes foreign illegal migrants the way that Europe is at the moment. The French government, it would seem, should explain to everyone why it hates native French ethnoculture so much. Here we have the Basques, a minority in the truest sense of the word, a tiny ethnic group with a unique language and a genetic footprint that stands apart from the rest of Europe, and France is doing nothing to protect them, while it imports millions of foreigners who are the majority demographic in terms of world population statistics. But the same irresponsibility and downright contempt for native European culture can be found in nearby nations as well. The United Kingdom is home to many forms of Celtic language, as well as dozens of dialects of English, many of which have close roots to the original speech of the very first Anglo-Saxons. But instead of making an effort to preserve this important cultural heritage, the UK government is making concessions for illegal immigrants and using taxes of hard-working British people to pay for foreigners who live off of their taxes and refuse to work. These unemployed migrants then reproduce in vast numbers, but native Britons will consistently tell you that they cannot afford to have more children. What is going on here? Native Europeans are being taxed for their own demographic replacement. In not too distant history, people could see what was happening and could be open and honest about it. A 2013 BBC report discussed the dying dialects of Britain and two older gentlemen wondered aloud why their government had funds to repair the local cathedral but not to preserve their actual culture. They were quoted as saying, it is part of our heritage. They spend thousands perver preserving the local cathedral, but what about our culture? It is intangible heritage and it's blowing away in the wind. The frightening truth is, Europeans are running out of time. 
Anyone who looks at the shifts in demographics and the rates of demographic reproduction, the changes in immigration in recent years, etc., can plainly see that the entire Western world has been led down a path of self-destruction in recent decades. There are very deep-rooted and dark reasons for this. But the most important and essential message to understand is that it is happening and we need to act fast to save ourselves. You have a choice right now. Do you love your heritage and wish to see its survival? Or will you be like a donkey following a carrot and parade joyfully towards your own extinction? We are a mighty and noble people who come from strong stock. We have never allowed ourselves to be cowed in this way, no matter what eternal threat we have faced. But now, the threat is insidious, for it comes from within. The time has come to call it out, root it out, cut out the cancer, so that we can heal and become a healthy culture once again. Will we champion our own genocide? Or do we have the will to survive? Links to all sources cited in this video are in the article which is linked in the description below. My name is Carolyn Emmerich. I write about the history, folklore, and mythology of Northern Europe. Please visit my website, carolynemmerich.com, to learn more.